Hello and welcome back to the course on machine learning. Today we're continuing exploring association rule learning and we're talking about the intuition behind the ECLA model. So the ECLA model is very, very uh, simple after we have already studied the a priori model. It's kind of like a simplified uh, version. All right, so let's have a look. Um, it also talks about, the ECLA model also talks about people who bought also bought. So it's kind of like a um, recommender system and similar to what we had in the uh, a, pri a priori algorithm. Uh, here we've got, uh, for instance, movies and we've got some potential rules. So basically exactly the same things. If you've got uh, your uh, movie lists or people uh, the movies that people liked, uh, people who like movie one are, or just generally looks like if somebody likes movie one, they're very likely to like movie two. If they like movie two, they're likely to like movie four. If they like movie one, they might like movie three. Again, these rules have will have different um, strength, but here we aren't, aren't actually going to be talking about rules per se because the CLAM model is different to the a priori model. Um, in the a priori model, we came up with rules towards the end. That's the output, and we based on the lift, we could uh, judge um, the strength of each rule. Whereas here, we are... Uh, going to be talking about sets, and you'll see why just now. So here we've got the market basket as optimization. Same thing that people who buy burgers are likely to buy French fries as well. People who buy vegetables are likely to buy fruits. And these are just some potential rules. So we're not saying they're uh, strong or some potential outcomes that we're looking at. We're not saying that they're strong or we're not selecting. And we're just saying what could potentially be. And then the cloud model is the responsible for actually going through all of these combinations and telling us what we should focus on. Um, all right, so in the cloud model, just like in the a priori model, we have the support factor. So there, previously in the a priori model, we had or the algorithm, we had uh, support, we had confidence, and we had lift. In the cloud model, we only have support. So we only are looking at, okay, so people who are watching um, a certain uh, certain combinations of movies, how often does this happen? And here, just bear in mind that M doesn't mean just one movie. And this was the same for a priori. It was just easier for us to understand the intuition based on one uh, movie or one product. But actually, M and I, what they stand for is a set of items or a set of movies. So, and specifically in the cloud model, it's, it doesn't really make sense to uh, look at, uh, you know, an item by itself because we don't have the um, confidence and the lift factors. We're only looking at support. So we're just looking at how frequently does this set of items uh, occur. So if we're just gonna look at a set of, item of, of items which contains only one item, then we're just looking at the frequency at how what, what is the popularity of movies. And that is very trivial. So we're not going to be looking at that. We're going to be aiming for at least two items in a set. And therefore, M here stands for a set of two movies or more. And what we're calculating for a support, uh, we're calculating, okay, what is, uh, how often does this set of two movies, let's say um, Interstellar and... X Machina, how often does it occur in all of the watch lists? So what percentage of watch lists or what percentage of um, um, lists of movies that people liked contain those two together? Not just one of them, but those two together. And let's say if, um, if hypothetically, if 100% of the lists that you had in a large data set contain both movies together, then that would imply that you know, in anybody who likes Interstellar likes Ex Machina, anybody likes Ex Machina likes Interstellar, and pretty much so. If anybody has seen even one of those movies, they you need to recommend that movie, the other one, to them. Um, if you or if you had like eighty percent of the list uh, of your lists had those two movies together, that basically means there's a high likelihood that they come in pairs, right? That if somebody liked one of them, then they like the other one. Same thing for transactions. Like if you have uh, chips and burgers in, you know, 75% of all of your orders, right? Then if somebody's just buying you know, burgers, then they're likely to, uh, then when you recommend chips to them, there's a 75% chance that they will also 
uh, be interested or will like to buy chips with their burgers. And that's it's a very, very trivial uh, approach. Um, and uh, that's that's pretty much it. That's all there is to the ECLA model. It's much faster and the steps involved are uh, set a minimum support. So you want to set your uh, support level at which you want to um, only uh, after below which you want to disregard anything. Uh, then you take all the subsets in transactions having higher support and minimum support, and then you sort these subsets in decreasing support. And basically, at the top, you will have the most, the strongest uh, combinations of items which you should look at. Uh, maybe you know you'll look at the top ten or top five or something like that. So that's pretty much it. That's all the Eclat model is. And as you can see, it's much easier to understand after you already know um, a bit about the a priori. All right, hope you enjoyed this tutorial and off we go to Hadlan to uh, implement this in practice. And I'll see you here next time. Until then, happy analyzing.